I think the Preakness is probably, I've always said, it's probably my favorite of the three. We're all in the same barn. We get to see everybody. They treat you great. I mean, the crab cakes, you know, you got to have the crab cakes. And everybody in Baltimore, they just, they really, you know, embrace the, the, the Preakness. Every time I've gone there, it's just, it's, it's exciting. I remember Silver Charm because he just won the Derby and basically I didn't care if I won or not. I just, I just won the Derby. I was flying high. Free house Silver Charm, Captain Budget. Oh, it's close. But actually I have taken that, hey, if he wins, fine. If he doesn't, hey, you know, into every Preakness after winning the Derby. American Pharaoh's race was just off the chart. They're off in the Preakness. He just got out there and he went to running and he, he's smoking it. He's cooking it. American Pharaoh on the inside. Thunders on through now. Jill's always next to me. Jill says, he's going too fast. And I go, he doesn't look like he's going fast. And I, when I saw those ears, Pharaoh, when he threw those ears forward, he was stroking it. He was in stroke mode. He was like, dude, I'm gone. And American Pharaoh and Victor Espinosa have won the Preakness. All the great ones. It said talent. That talent is like, you know, you... you can't train that. Justified. He's on a dizzying ascent to greatness. For a horse that's come in 75 days, he walked in that paddock like he owned the place. He stood in there like a statue. He didn't make a move. There was a lot of commotion going on. I saw a lot of horses get nervous, and uh, he knows he's Big Pete, you know. When you have those super athletes like he is, just like any human athlete, the ones that are just, you know, they're just, they do everything effortlessly. So, um, I just have to pinch myself that I have a horse like that.